ओम सहना सहनो भुनक्तु सह वीर करवाहे तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तु मा विषावे ओम शांति 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 समस्त जन कल्याण निरत करुणामय नमा चिन्मय देव सदु ब्रह्म विदर So last week now we saw sutra 56 hmm? so there we saw that this bhakti when it's something that's without desire without guna without any want for anything not even want for moksha that is called supreme bhakti that kind of bhakti that grows every single moment the kind of bhakti that's unbroken the kind of bhakti wherein the devotee loses themselves the supreme bhakti this is what a gnani experiences now nara ji says don't worry if you don't have this bhakti yet because there is what we call secondary bhakti this is where we saw sutra 56 that in this gauni in this secondary bhakti there is a division by guna and also by the desire so by the nature of one's bhakti which is the guna and by the nature of one's desire for that bhakti and so a bhakti can be satvik rajasik tamasik and we saw that before satvik is when we're seeking to be one with god we're seeking to please god rajasik bhakti is when we want bhakti we want to we we pray to god for wealth for comfort for security for health and tamasik bhakti is when we pray to bhagwan to hurt other people right i gave you uh, some stories last time wherein people actually pray to harm other people and then according to the desires we had artha artharthi and jignyasu artha one meaning is the one who's only seeking bhagwan when they have trouble when they have trouble or when they're in distress they pray and artharthi is the one who is only seeking wealth who's only praying to bhagwan for wealth for comfort for all kinds of security and jignyasu is the one praying to bhagwan desiring to know him desiring to know all about him with pure curiosity that is called jignyasu another meaning of artha that gurudev is given here is somebody who just is so restless to be one with bhagwan just wants to be one with bhagwan and leave all everything in the world that's another meaning of artha so now in sutra 57 he explains which is the highest of the secondary type so sutra 57 उत्तरस्मात् 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 पूर्व पूर्वाश्रेयाय भवति पूर्व पूर्वाश्रेयाय भवति सो उत्तरस्मात् उत्तरस्मात् देन ईच सक्सीडिंग वन पूर्व पूर्वा ईच प्रीसीडिंग वन श्रेयाय इज फॉर द बेटर और नोबलर भवति बिकम्स so then each succeeding one each preceding one becomes greater so obviously when we're talking about bhakti in terms of satvik rajasik tamasik satvik bhakti is the best bhakti hmm? but note that any way is a way to reach bhagwan so as we saw last week even if sometimes our bhakti may be very rajasik in nature have it love bhagwan go to bhagwan seek to bhagwan 
seek Bhagavan because if we go towards him, he'll take 10 steps towards us. So I just catch him in some way, catch hold of him in some way, you know? And if we catch hold of him in some way, then he will always remain with us. One time uh, somebody asked Guruji this question, how do you hold on to the Guru's feet? How do you hold on to the Guru's feet? So Guruji said, you must keep one hand under their feet and one hand on top. Huh? So that if the Guru wants to walk away, he cannot. <laughs> he cannot, right? So what is the hand underneath? The hand underneath is the seva because that crushes our ego. So one hand underneath is the seva and the other hand on top is our sadhana, our sadhana, because when we hold, when we do our sadhana, we're ever connected. So when we hold on to Bhagavan, we have to hold on with seva and sadhana and hold Bhagavan's feet like this so that he cannot walk out. Hmm? So in whichever way, hold him, hold Bhagavati, hold Bhagavan, so that they cannot go anywhere. Even if we start with tamasik bhakti or rajasik bhakti, hold it. And then in terms of the desire category, if we take artha to mean the one who only calls Bhagavan in distress, then the highest would be first jignyasu, the one who's desiring for God to know more about God. Then artharthi, the one who's seeking pleasures and praying to God for pleasure. And then the artha, the one who's only seeking Bhagavan in distress. But if we take artha to mean the one who only wants God and who's so restless and wants to let everything go in the world and nothing else but Bhagavan, like Mirabai and the gopis, then artha would be the highest. And then, the, of course, the jignyasus, those who are curious, and then altharthis, those who seek pleasure. So the main point here is, whichever way you catch hold of Bhagavan, catch hold of Bhagavan, and then he won't walk away from us. Now, the next topic comes about how bhakti is so easy to practice. Because sometimes, you know, Naraji, he, in and throughout this text, he's describing such supreme bhakti. And sometimes we might get dissuaded and say, can I really practice bhakti? Can I really have bhakti grow in my heart? So Naraji says, yes, you can. So these next set of verses, 58 to 60, they're actually telling us that bhakti is easy to practice. Anybody can do it. So Sutra 58. Anya smart, Anya smart, Sola bhyam bhakto, Sola bhyam bhakto. So this bhakti in the path of devotion, bhakto, in the path of devotion, there is saulabhyam, means it's very easy to attain, anyasma, than the other paths. So then all other paths, devotion is readily available, easily attainable. And this concept also had come earlier. We saw how in Ashtanga Yoga, we have to do all yama, niyama, pranayama, pratyahara, all kinds of things. Dharana, dhyana, samadhi. And when we go to it to samadhi, there's savikalpa samadhi. Then there's nirvikalpa samadhi. And there's a whole process how to practice it. So we have these ashtanga, ashtanga yoga, eight steps that we have to stick to. And it deals with immense control and mastery of the mind and sense organs. That takes a lot of effort. And when we come to karma yoga, we also saw that oh, we have to have a fit and able body, wealth, resources. We have to have connections. We have to have the proper environment to do karma yoga. Many people who want to serve, who want to do karma yoga, they don't even have that opportunity to do it. So 
this this kind of karma yoga to be able to do it we have to have that proper environment that proper resources help and what to talk of jnana yoga it's incredibly subtle as we are trying to distinguish what is atma what is anatma right and it requires all of these qualifications which we know viveka vairagya shamadi shatka sampatti mumukshatva requires all of these qualities and it's extremely subtle but bhakti on the other hand it's so easy to practice means it's accessible to all why because bhakti is a language of love it's a language of love and the language of love transcends all boundaries the language of love we can communicate with anybody when we travel to a different country and we can't speak the language what works you just smile look into their eyes and everything's fixed <laughs> everything's fixed because they feel your love they feel the smile they feel the love in your eyes and immediately you can connect we don't even have to speak we don't even have to say anything not only with humans but with animals also with animals now we cannot speak their language they cannot speak our language but they also understand love they also understand when we just pat them we show them love we smile at them or we give them food and they understand ha ah, we are love hmm plants also they understand you can see you can feel them blooming because they can feel your love but some people also talk to their plants some people also communicate with their plants right so this bhakti is the language of love it's a language of love that anybody can understand anybody can understand and it's it's so easy to understand and it surpasses all kinds of words and and what in in that love has so much strength that even if you can't speak what can you do you can cry a baby cannot speak right but that baby is so weak imagine how weak the baby is hmm? a young young baby can't even turn on its own right the baby, you have, you have to take the baby and turn it because it ca cannot turn turn him turn her turn the baby the baby in the beginning cannot even crawl on the baby you know on their own the baby definitely cannot walk on their own cannot change themselves cannot eat on their own we have to feed them also but baby very young can't do anything on their own but the what is the strength of the baby the baby can cry and when the baby cries the mother comes and the all powerful mother gives its strength to turn to crawl to eat to to just be you know be carried to do everything just by crying that baby gains all strength because of the mother so bhakti is like that that even when there's nothing we can do even crying even just crying that's also bhakti that is also a way of bhakti the baby will that mother that goddess will come to us and lift us up so it is so lovely and also there's no there's no loss in bhakti huh? if somebody can't read can't write can't walk can't see they can practice bhakti because it is just taking the name of bhagwan and bhakti can also be practiced in any at any time any time sometimes you know when we're traveling it's hard to listen to vedanta lecture because you're in a different zone different frame of mind but what can be done taking bhagwan's name so easy when we're going on a hike when we're walking somewhere taking bhagwan singh so easy it can be done in the morning in the afternoon in the evening any time it can even be done when you even when you're lying down before you sleep you can still still do bhakti still do bhakti so everybody has an access to this at any time people can access this 
at any place also people can access it outside you go inside you go anywhere you go we can just be immersed in the name of bhagavan and and people also they, they can practice it in such strange ways so there's one um, my my sanskrit teacher sent me this nice story on ganapa Ganapa is a devotee on, oh, he's a devotee of Lord Shiva. And this Ganapa is very, very unique because he was a, a forest dweller, a forest dweller and used to hunt for a living. Now he had a Bhagavan Shiva. He had an image of Bhagavan Shiva. Now this Ganapa, how did he, how should, did he used to worship Bhagavan Shiva? He didn't have any patra. He didn't have any plate or anything like that. So he used to um, hunt, you know, animals. And that flesh of animals, he used to try it to see if it's good or not. Then only offer it to Bhagavan. Hmm? So he used to try it. And then if it's good, he would hold it in his hand. Then he wanted also to offer Bhagavan water, but there's no vessel. So he would keep the water in his uh, mouth. In his mouth, he would keep the water. He would hold that, that mamsa, that flesh in his hand. And because he's holding the flesh in his hand and the water's in his uh, mouth, he goes to Bhagavan with shoes. He doesn't even rem remove his shoes. And he goes like this and he offers to Bhagavan Shiva. Very, very unique kind of bhakti. Then one time, uh, he saw that in the murti of Bhagavan Shiva, the eye was bleeding. So he said, now what to do? So he said, I know what to do. I'll remove my eye and put it there. Because if I do that, then it will stop bleeding. So he, he cuts out his eye and he puts it there. But then what happens is the other eye of Lord Shiva starts bleeding. So he's thinking now, I can cut off my other eye. I can cut off my other eye, but how will I know where to put that eye? Because I'll be blind. So he takes his foot, his toe, and he feels where the other eye is going to be. And then he says, okay, what I'll do now is I'll cut off my eye. And then with my toe, I'll be able to feel where that eye is. And right when he's about to do it, Bhagavan Shiva gives him darshan. Hmm? So the the purport of this verse is that, that this is the glory of bhakti this is not to say that we should worship bhagavan like that no but the glory of bhakti is anybody anybody can practice hmm? so i'm going to share this with you so you can see this verse comes in shivananda lahari right so what does it say it says Marga varitita paduka pashupate angasya kurchayate gandu shambu nishe chanam pura ripor divya vishe kayate. So those sandals become like the crown of Bhagavan Shiva. That gargled mouthful of water become like the holy water of Bath. To him who destroyed the three cities. This is to Bhagavan Shiva. In that just tasted pieces, that juta, that becomes offering to Bhagavan Shiva. Bhakti kim na karoti aho vana charo bhakta vatam sayate. Wonder of wonders, the hunter in the forest becomes the king of devotees. So what is there that devotion cannot do? So this is how unique bhakti is. Huh? And it's, it's easily attainable. Now, somebody might ask, but what is the proof that somebody has bhakti? It's easily attainable. It can be attained by many, many people, even a hunter in the forest. But what is the proof that one has bhakti? So, Sutra 59. So this bhakti, 
Swayam Pramanatvat. Due to being the proof, the nature of proof itself means being because it is self evident. Pramanantarasya to another pramana or another evidence, anapekshatva. It's not dependent. It's not dependent on another proof because it is self proved. So because love depends on no other proof, it is in itself being of the nature of a proof. It is self-evident. So how do we know we have Viveka? So Gurudev, very beautifully, he, he brings this topic. How do we know we have Viveka or the power to discriminate or to distinguish? Because we make correct choices. So we know that we have the power of discrimination or discernment because a proof of that is we're able to make the right choices. We know we have this passion or vairagya. How? Because we are able to detach from the world. Detach meaning we're able to let go of the world as a source of our happiness. We know we have shama and dhamma control of the mind and senses, how our way of living is a proof. If we are disciplined in the way that we live, then we have control of mind and sense. How do we know that we have uparama? Uparama means the ability to withdraw from unnecessary activity. We know that if we become more and more introverted, that's a proof of uparama. We don't unnecessarily engage where we are not required to engage. How do we know we have shraddha? Our proof of faith is we have no worries. You can't have both together. Hmm? We have faith. It means there's no worries. If there are worries, there's no faith. The proof of titiksha or endurance is we have a lot of patience to bear. The proof of samadhanam or concentration is that we have the ability to penetrate deeply into something for a long period of time. We have that ability and we have concentration. And the proof of mumukshitvam, desire for the self, is that we actually seek, we actually walk. But when it comes to bhakti, bhakti is self-evident. It's self-proved. Who can prove bhakti? Who knows if we have love in our heart? Only we know. Only we know if we have love in our heart. And love in itself is a proof. We cannot say that saying I love you to somebody is proof. Because not everybody does that. See, everybody loves in a different way. Some people that are not expressive through words. So we cannot say that holding hands is a, a proof or buying something for somebody is proof. We cannot say because everybody just loves in so many different ways. That's the nature of love. But love is self-proved. It's self-proved. And the most beautiful thing about this devotion is it's proved here and now. So you, in your own heart, you know of your bhakti. I, in my own heart, I know if I have bhakti. And that bhakti also we can feel here and now. We don't need to go to another place, another time, uh, you know, another environment. We can feel that bhakti when our hair stand on end, when tears come down from our eyes, when we feel just so much joy in us. We know we have so everybody knows their own bhakti and nobody needs to prove it. Now, when something is so available for everybody, when something is easily attainable, when something does not need to be proven by anyone, we get the idea that, oh, you know, maybe it's not worth it. It's too easy. Hmm? See, when something is free and easy, we don't value it so much. Class is free and easy. So, okay, if I come, okay. If I don't come, okay. But if I, we charge for class, I have to come <laughs> because we're charging. Hmm? When something is free and easy, sometimes we just take advantage. It's free, it will be there. So if I want, okay. If I don't want, okay. Hmm? 
But Naraji says, because this is easily attainable, this is free, this is beautiful, don't take it for granted. Bhakti is actually of great value. It might be easily attainable, but it's of great, great value. And why is it of great value? He tells us, Sutra number 60. Shanti Rupat, Shanti Rupat, Paramananda Rupacha, Paramananda Rupacha. He says, Bhakti is very, very valuable. It's very worthy because Shanti Rupa, it's of the nature of peace. And Paramananda Rupa, because it's of the nature of supreme bliss. What do we mean by it's of the nature of peace? You see, who is our alambana or support in bhakti? It is Bhagavan, right? There's some people when we think of, we feel very disturbed. <laughs> we just that image of the person we're like, so we get so disturbed. Hmm? Or sometimes just a task that we have to do, already we feel tired. I have to do this task. I haven't started doing it, but already I'm seeing it on my list. Already I feel so tired. Or some place I have to go that I don't want to go. Already I'm so upset. Huh? It, by Just by the thought of a person, the thought of a place, the thought of a task, already we feel like, ah, oh, how we feel that. Sometimes the weather, if it says it's cold outside, by just by seeing the number, we already feel cold inside. I feel so cold. We haven't even got outside. Hmm? Bhakti is in such a manner that the being that we're thinking of is so peaceful that we will automatically feel peaceful. Now, can we think of Bhagavan Shiva and feel so disturbed? That's very hard. Try as you may, it's very hard because just looking at him, he's the embodiment of peace. How can we, we feel so disturbed? Looking at Durga Devi, can we feel weak? Oh, we cannot because she just, you look at her, she's so strong and powerful. We feel like just looking at her, we can do anything. You look at Hanumanji, can we feel tired? No. His, his, his pose is such that he's ever ready to serve. So just thinking of Bhagavan, thinking even of the bhaktas of Bhagavan, it gives us so much peace because the very person, the very being is of the nature of peace. So any thought associated with that will only give us peace. And what is this Paramananda Bhakti is also that which gives us supreme bliss. What is there in bhakti? What's there in bhakti is what we call rasa. Rasa, how to translate, it means there is that uh, delight, uh, that taste, that delight, that essence, that savor. There's that rasa. You can feel. So, I'll just give you an example. What's very prevalent in bhakti is to listen to katha. Katha means stories. And when you read these stories, there's a great delight that comes in our minds. The delight that the gopis felt when they were with Sri Krishna. And even when they were away from Sri Krishna, they also felt delight. They also felt delight because when they would be united with Sri Krishna, they were thinking about what that delight would be. Hmm? When Sri Ramachandra Ji was born, the whole Ayodhya was in delight. Everybody was dressed up. Everybody was carrying their arti thalis. Everyone was ready just to see his face. And it is said all the devatas were showering flowers and the sun in Ayodhya was shining for one month straight because it forgot itself, forgot itself. And Bhagavan Shiva could not resist that he had to come in a disguise because he just wanted to feel the hands of Sri Rama. And Gosalya also was just so marveled by this Sri Rama. So 
everybody in Ayodhya felt this great, great rasa or great light just by his birth. Just by Sri Krishna's sports, his play, everybody feels great delight. So this is the kind of path where uh, people feel that ecstasy. Mm -hmm. So it's very peaceful, a very ec ecstatic kind of bliss. And that is the glory of bhakti. So Naraji says, even if it's easily attainable, available for everyone, it is self-proven, still pursue it. Pursue it because it will give us a sense of peace. Hmm? And then he's going to go in to say, but as you're pursuing, there are going to be obstacles. So what the obstacles are to this bhakti, we will take up next week. Hmm? For now, we will keep our minds on this. Okay? Pause for a moment.